Hey everybody, this is round four of my playthrough of Trouble in Sandpoint. Really, it should be... Wait, yeah, Trouble in Sandpoint. Um, really, it should be Trouble under Sandpoint right now, because we're in the Catacombs of Wrath. Oh, no, we're not. We left the Catacombs of Wrath. So Sioni managed to close the Catacombs of Wrath in the previous uh, round. So it is closed, but it's got a bunch of cards in it. And I don't know, the villain might still be in there. We We closed it because we... We managed to kill the henchman, Corvus. Goblin henchman. That guy right there, Corvus. So he, we defeated him, and we closed the location. But because the villain escaped to an unknown location, the villain could theoretically still be in the catacombs. Uh, whether that'll matter, I don't know. What's going on now is that we're back in the shrine. We know because Sioni scried on the top card of this deck, that this is a trap. It's a slashing, like a pendulum trap or something. A slashing blade trap. So it's going to require a dex disable save of 9. And if undefeated, every character at this location is dealt 1d4 combat damage. That's okay. I've moved Sioni out of this location specifically for that reason. So we've got nothing really to help us with this check, except the Blessing card. So I could just expend the Blessing to try to minimize damage. Feels a little bit weird to do that, because uh, in a way, you know, we're spending one possibly to avoid one. But the damage could be a lot more than one. It could be four. So I think it's worth it. So his Dexterity is a D8. So he's going to be rolling two D8. Actually, let's look at the top of the Blessing deck, because the Blessing of the, of the Gods can mimic whatever is in the top of the timer deck. So it says, discard this card to add one to a check. Discard two, discard it to add two dice to, oh, a monster. Okay, so nothing. So it's just, yeah, 2d8 is what we're rolling, and we're hoping for a total of nine. So that's a seven, that's a good start. And an eight, that's a great finish. So, Valerius was able to duck under the slashing blades, or hop over them, or whatever. Or maybe just his leather armor took the brunt of the attack. Whatever the case, he doesn't take any damage. Is he? Does he get to explore again? No, he just defeats it. Okay, well that's good. Do we have more scrying? Yes, we have a detect magic. So, that's good. Because that means that we can turn over a timer deck card and send Sioni over to this location and have her detect magic on the top of the deck. It's a Wrathful Sin Spawn. We've been here before. This is a henchman. If, if she succeeds in killing this henchman, if, should she choose to take it on, then she can close this location. And to do that, she needs to, uh, to to banish a blessing. I just used up the blessing that we were supposed to use. Oh, but we have a blessing. Okay, that's great. Okay, so I think we got this under... We, we got this. So, yeah, I think she will encounter the Sin Spawn. Using her Force Missile, she can just recharge it. She gets 2d4, and Valeros is in the same location, so she gets another d4. I gotta buy more d4s for this game, specifically. Uh, so it's 3d4s and her, Arcan her arcane die, well, her charisma die, plus her arcane bonus of 2. And she's hoping to get a... Oh, well, she can make a wisdom 6 save. Okay, so she's hoping to get a 9. If she had failed that save, Wisdom 6, then this would have been a 10 difficulty. But she, for once, got a 6 on a d6, and therefore uh, is able to... She, her, her Wisdom is 6, right? I'm not... I'm not f yeah, because her, her Wisdom is 6 because her Strength is d4. That's, that's what I need to remind myself. Okay. So she's got... Um, she's got to get a 9 across 3d4 and a... No, she has to get a 7 across 3d4 and a d12. 
I'm feeling pretty good about this. So that's a three. So she's got a total of, well, let's not do it that way. So she, uh, I'm shooting for a seven, I said. So she got a three, a two, so that's five, a four, so that's nine, 10, 11 for a nine. So yeah, we're, we're well within an eight. So she slaughters the sin spawn, wrathful sin spawn, dead. Which means that she gets to close the location. The location closing um, requirement is to banish a card, a blessing card. She can do this now, I think, because she has, yeah, she has just enough card cards in her dis, uh, her draw deck. So she's banish, banishing the blessing of the gods. This is a closed location now. So we have we have reached that quirky condition in this game of having closed all the locations. We we encountered the villain once, but it got away into a location. We don't know which location it got to. So we have now reached the point where neither location is open and the villain is is in one of the two so according to the rule book as 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 printed um and possibly on the pdf online i'm not sure but if you defeat the the villain close the, the villain's location the problem is that i've not defeated the i mean i have defeated the villain and we did close that location. If there are villains remaining in the deck, banish everything except the remaining villains and shuffle the deck if needed. The location is not permanently closed, but is temporarily closed, and the defeated villain cannot escape to it. Okay, so, I mean, that makes sense, and I've done that. But what happens when you've, when you've defeated, when you've closed all locations but have not re-encountered the villain? Um, well... Here in the rule book it says if the villain has nowhere to escape to you win. The way I'm reading that is that the villain has nowhere to escape to and so this scenario is successful. That's the way that I'm reading that. I don't know if that's the intent. I don't know if I'm supposed to uncover the villain and and defeat it again. Or whether that's literally the intent, like, you're done. So I, I'm not sure. I mean, I figure the henchman giving you the opportunity to close the location points to the fact that, yes, actually, it's, it's correct. You can defeat the villain by, by cornering the villain in a closed location. Because otherwise, why would you be able to close a location when you defeat the henchman? Uh, it also feels mildly anticlimactic and I have a bunch of card of timer deck left so what I'm going to do even though the location is closed is I'm going to continue to explore so why not uh, so what's what's Sioni up to she's got four cards in her hand so she does need to draw back up to six yeah that's correct because it is the end of her turn so one two so she's still got zero health it is now Valeros's turn. Flip over a timer card. And, I mean, the problem with... Never mind. That's the villain. <laughs> I was going to say, the problem with this strategy is that you could still lose just because the numbers are stacked against you. But um, it doesn't really matter because here's Aurelium. Aurelium, um, before we can encounter Aurelium, we have to defeat yet another Sin Spawn. I feel like we're getting really good at defeating Sin Spawns here. Uh, so this is a Sin Spawn, a Wisdom check 6 to keep it at 9. Valeros's Wisdom is a d4, so that's not going to happen. So it's a 10 to defeat this creature. Well, Valeros still has his trusty Bastard Sword. Oh, he did not draw up. Oh, well, that's because he doesn't draw up, right? I don't remember when he discarded something. Did he do that for damage, and then I forgot? Or did he do that to close the location? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, well, we'll just... We'll go with it. So, he gets 2d10 for his melee, 
and for a bonus for using the Bastard Sword. And a bonus to his melee, which is three. He has to defeat this thing. I kind of feel nervous about this and kind of want to even like recycle. Oh, maybe that's what I should do is recharge this so he could use his d10 and a d8 and another d6. That would that feels really good. I mean, really good. So he's got all these die to get like a 10 and then we'll recycle the bastard sword, the recharge of the bastard sword to defeat the villain. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Okay, so we'll do a d8 first, and that's a 3. And a 5. Is that 8, 9, 10, 11? So that's enough to defeat the Sin Spawn. Definitely. Okay, cool. So Sin Spawn is dead, so now we can get... We've chopped through the Sin Spawns, and now we're face-to-face -face with Aurelium in the Temple of Lamashtu, like a demon goddess facing down a creature that looks, I think, a little bit like a Deathclaw. So that's properly epic, I think. Um, so the Bastard Sword, we can recharge. So we can get a D10 for Strength. We get an additional D10 for using the Bastard Sword. We recharge it for yet another D10. It's 3D10. And then he's got his melee bonus, which is a, a three. Uh, so before the encounter, choose a character at your location to summon an encounter. Okay, we just did that. If undefeated, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're looking for a 14 against this creature. And I think, is that a 14 or a 10? No, 14. So a 14 to defeat this creature across three different D10. We'll see what happens. Oh dear. Rolling a one right outside the gate. Not great. Okay, so between these two die now we need a 10. Total of 10. A 2. This is really not good. This is astonishingly, um, this is, this is very surprising to me. Okay, so this is the, the roll that matters, and it was a 4. Wow, monumental failure by Valeros to, to defeat this villain. So that's a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm pretty sure that what we really needed to have happen was a combat of 14, and that did not happen. Okay. That's not good. However, the villain cannot escape. So let's look at what happens. If undefeated, succeed at a wisdom and divine eight check or move to a random other location. Well, the villain can't go to another location from what I understand. So that doesn't count. So he takes the damage um, and that's his turn as far as I understand. Um, so he takes the damage he just did that, so he's down to zero in his hand. This villain cannot move to a closed location. And normally, when you haven't defeated something, it basically gets shuffled back into its own deck. So I, th I feel like that's probably what should happen here. And I guess I should probably actually shuffle, and I guess I'll do it sort of... Well, I'll just, just do it with my eyes closed or something, uh, to really kind of lose track of where that villain might be. I still feel like, I feel like this is the villain card. No, it's not. Okay. Well, good for me. Um, cool. All right. So the villain is somewhere in this deck now. Don't know where. It is undefeated. And I believe I'm doing this correctly. Switching over to Sioni. She's got all of her cards all of her usual cards. She could detect magic to try to figure out what is on the top here. Okay, so she knows that this is the villain now, and that's good. Um, the 
to to combat this villain with arcane die is only 10. So she has a pretty good she has a pretty good chance of beating the villain with her arcane powers. So I believe that's what we're going to do. But as a condition of facing this villain, you can choose a character at your location to summon and encounter a wrathful sin spawn. I'm going to choose Valeros. Valeros fails at the wisdom check, so the difficulty of the sin spawn is a 10. Oh, wait a minute. This is, yeah, this is, okay. So, oh no, wait, yeah, because Valeros would have drawn back up. I thought he had zero in his hand, like, for real. And then I was seeing the flaw in my logic, but actually it's fine because he didn't, he didn't draw back up. Um, so he can use his longsword to get an additional d8 and a d6 if he recharges the longsword, which, I mean, why wouldn't he? This is the end game again. I mean, I thought it was before, but I mean, it's just recharging. So he's got a d8 and a d6, plus he's got his um, usual strength die, plus his uh, plus three melee bonus. So all told, he needs a seven across all of these die. That's an eight, so he succeeds. So he's slain the Wrathful Sin spawn, and now Sione can go head-to-head -head with Aurelium. And that's going to be her Arcane die, plus her bonus of a plus two, plus two d4, and I only have one d4. And then also... She can recharge this Acolyte to add a d4. So that's 4d4. I was going to use this Blast Stone, but if I did that, I would be she would be out of uh, cards, and I feel weird about that. So she's going to go uh, against Aurelium with a d12 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 4d4. Because Valeros can contribute a d4, she gets 2d4 from her force missile, and then an extra d4 from the acolyte that she just recharged. So I guess I'll start with the d4s. That's a 1. That's a 4, so that's 5. 8. 9, 10, 11. So she has beat Aurelium with an 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. With a 15. So she beats Aurelium with her arcane die, and she even beats, I mean, you know, both DCs she beats. I mean, not that you have to, but that's a pretty good, that's a solid victory. So Aurelium is dead. And the location is automatically closed because the villain is dead. Oh, the, the location was already closed. So we, we, we beat this scenario both by closing all locations and giving the villain nowhere to run to and defeating the villain. So no matter what the actual win condition, unclear though it may be in the rule book, we've we've satisfied both. Which means that unlike the previous scenario, we actually won this one. So that's 2 for 3, and the reward is that each character gains a power feat. Power feats are the elements down at the bottom of the card. So for Valeros, that could mean that he's going to be able to add a d4 plus 1 to another character's uh, combat check. Or he could increase his hand size to 5. I don't know that there's an advantage to increasing his hand size to 5, because uh, then when you have to draw from your draw deck back up to 5, if you've got 0 cards left, you're dead. So I'm not really sure how that's a benefit without also increasing the number of cards in your hand. But that has not been an option yet, so I don't think I'm going to go for that. I think I'll just go for his combat bonus. Sione's uh, power list is, again, she could increase her hand size, which would, which would be detrimental for her. Or she could um, discard a card to roll an arcane d6, no, uh, an arcane die plus a d6 plus one 
with uh, as her spell, or she could automatically succeed to recharge a spell or an item. I think that's probably what I'm going to take, because that way she can use items like like that fire wand that I'm using out of the out of the other deck, out of the skull and shackle deck. I guess I buried that one. There it is. So instead of uh, discarding that, she could just recharge it, I think. Is that correct? Or is this just a bury? Yeah, you can bury it for a bigger bonus, but otherwise you can just... No, no, you bury it to roll. Okay. After playing this card, succeed at an arcane check to recharge instead of burying. Oh, wait, it says to succeed to recharge your spell. It doesn't say instead of discard. It says to recharge. Okay, cool. All right, so yeah, that's probably what I'll do for her. So she's going to just automatically recharge items from now on, and Valeros is going to add a d4 plus 1 to another character's combat check at the same location. Seems pretty good to me. Okay, that's everything. That's, that's this scenario done. Next up is Approach to Thistletop.